Mitchell's Plain, Delft, Elsie's River, Philippi, Nyanga and Kailicha. These are just some of the hot zones in the Western Cape where members of the National Defence Force will be visible to help the provincial government regain some lost ground against the Cape's most violent gangs. Establishing the elite anti-gang unit hasn't been enough, but is the army the right solution? The police's top brass descended upon the Cape Flats this week in the wake of more mayhem on the streets. The contingent included Police Minister Becky Tele, who visited the families of victims. Thirteen people were murdered last week. On Friday evening, six women were shot dead in Philippi East. The next day, three men were gunned down at a tavern close by. Two died. A further three men were killed at a house a kilometre away. There were also murders in Hanover Park and Delft. It was a dark weekend for the Cape Flats as news filtered through of these killings. But the extent of the violence that is gripping the Western Cape became more chilling as the reports came through from the mortuaries. These reports detailing the weekend's fatalities stunned Albert Fritz, who heads up community safety in the Western Cape. I must tell you, we were shocked when we heard it was 55. So 55, not necessarily gang-related, but in other forms of um, criminality, people were murdered. And even for the notoriously violent Cape Flats, these murders were so brutal and severe that it was decided to bring in the army to stem the tide. Every murder is a tragedy for any family, but it was the execution-style killing of six young women in these two houses that has rocked this community. Grieving residents stand around the two homes where the women, aged between 18 and 25, lost their lives. The mother of one of the victims, Yam Tanda, was too distraught to speak to us. With Siam Tanda, that fateful evening was her close friend Isis. Her parents were called to the scene soon after the mass killing. Their bodies lay together. I saw that it's passed already. Now it can't, not gonna help you. It's not gonna wake up. He said she had been shot in the neck, an image he would never forget. This is the second tragedy for the couple. Five years ago, their 16-year-old daughter was also murdered. Did someone take my daughter and kidnap and shot her? 2014, she was 16. Lindiwe Zelebi lost two sons and a nephew when they were gunned down last weekend. She was also too upset to talk. I'm better to be a cold. I'm better to be a cold. It's too much. Her husband, Watwana, has no idea why his two sons and nephew were killed. Despite being visited by the National Minister of Police, he's skeptical. The motives for the murders in Philippi remain unclear, according to Colonel Trout. At this stage, we are looking at the possibility that there could be a link. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, we cannot disclose the final aspects of our investigation. Mm -hmm. Additional police resources were rushed into Philippi this week to increase visibility. Trying to curb the violence is the newly formed anti-gang unit, which we featured earlier this year. It's headed up by General Andre Lincoln, who says that its mission is to take down the gangsters and destroy their underground economies. The unit made 120 arrests in its first three months in operation for crimes such as murder. But there's now been a spike in gang-on-gang -gang murders. Gang killings have, have increased, um, but that is because, as, as an anti-gang unit, we are we are, for the lack of a better word, punishing them. Right? We, we're taking a, a, away drug territory and people are fighting for more drug territory. Um, we're confiscating drugs, they're fighting for more drugs. And as a result, um, yes, they, 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 people do get murdered, yes. 
Many of us will never know what it's like to live in a gang-infested area. These aren't the leafy suburbs of Santon or Camps Bay. Here, the mere thought of just going to buy bread means you'll never know if you'll make it back home alive. Albert Fritz, who visited the families of murder victims, knows this all too well. While I was in and over park, um, you know, a woman came from church and she was shot through the leg. So, you know, it's like, it's almost very seriously like that you can't walk to this shop. And, and I really think it's absolutely frightening. Everyone is living in fear. Everyone is devastated in this one. No one is feeling safe. Philippi East Ward Committee member for safety and security, Olisa Pukai, said there was only one solution. You've, you've called for the army to be deployed. Yes, because the community, they believe that the army will help us out in this scenario. That we, It's not a scenario as such. This is a massacre. His sentiments are shared by another community leader. I'm not saying that police, they are failing to do their works. Mm -hmm. But whoever, whatever who can come and help this out of this situation, we we'll like it. It's either it's the police, they bring them in numbers, we, we, it's either it's the army, you know. It, 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 everything that can work to clean up the, the, the situation that is taking place, you know. Earlier this week, Albert Fritz also called for the army to be deployed. The army will just secure the place. You know, you can't have people with batons going in there. So, you know, and, and, and we want to talk about a peacekeeping force that can bring out people and to secure our ordinary, you know, peace-loving people in our country. In a dramatic turnabout, Minister Becky Kele, who had earlier this week rejected calls for the army, made a surprise announcement in Parliament on Thursday night after receiving the green light from President Ramaphosa. We'll, we'll be deploying from 2 a.m. the previous night, this morning, where they started to deploy extra police, and tomorrow was sealing off the Western Cape Cape Flats with the South African National Defense Force, with the Special Forces of the South African Police. They will make sure, will make sure that the people of this place are finally safe, working together with everybody working together. The army will initially be deployed for a three-month period, but this carries risks, according to Professor Pierre de Force, who cites Brazil as an example. In Brazil, in Rio specifically, there's a big problem with gangs in the favelas. And over the last 10 years, the military has been called in on, I think, 11 occasions. And what has happened, it has actually escalated the situation because the military comes in, they start shooting. The gangs, they then weaponize up. They get machine guns or semi-automatic machine guns. And so what has happened because of that is more people are actually getting killed because it's become more violent. But the minister was in a fighting spirit in Parliament. We'll do that at Bishop Michel's Plain, Delft, Elsus River, Nyanga, Kailisha, Philip Price Fountain, where people have been dying. We'll seal that one. We'll go to all to we'll go to door to door. We'll collect every illegal firearm. We'll collect all criminals that we want. We'll collect, we'll call, we'll collect all outstanding criminals that have been on bail. Extra police and the army deployment has come too late for the families of last week's massacre. Their main concern now is to try and find the money to have their children transported to the Eastern Cape for burial. The aggrieving process has just begun. <laughs>